right, um, this evening. I put these out last night, but what I'm going to do is kind of try to cut some of this extra meat off of these. This is a badger skull that I got off a guy uh, out in New Mexico for a few bucks. I thought it'd be neat to have see what one of them look like when it's all cleaned up. I'm going to have a line knife. Uh, those with the replaceable blades, they kind of work real good with for this kind of stuff. Um, and I, but I let this sit out all day long, so it kind of dried a little in here in this old garage. And but what I want to do is kind of take some of the excess meat off of here, and uh, I might have to go ahead and switch blades. I've had this one on here for a little while, but uh, I take some of the excess meat off of there so that it doesn't take so long to macerate so there's this it's got quite a large bit of meat on the top of this badger skull it's a it's a pretty good sized piece of meat it's kind of like a medallion or a thin cut piece of deer steak or something I'm sure not as desirable this ain't the best work that a person or the most desirable I might say but it is interesting when it done it's done and everybody seems to think it's neat you know but like I said in in another video there I showed my maceration tank in the back and I got some skulls that I pull out of it um, uh, it was over a year ago that I posted that video but um, you just got to do the best to clean up this thing as good as possible and uh, so I get down here and I go around if you can see right here this would be the bone for that that eye socket I'm going to go through there and I'm going to try to get all this meat from beside it and then later on you'll have a little bit hang up when you're macerating um, you pull it out of the tank and you might take a stick or something and poke out that extra uh, the little cart cartilage or whatever that's hanging on uh, after it macerates for a week or so it'll get all nice and soft and nasty smelling and you gotta get in there and get that out So if you're doing this kind of work it's best to have it on a table uh, just some considerations best to have it on a table where you can work without bending over uh, and make a little bit more ergonomically um, safe for you so you don't end up hurting your back or something like that so short sharp knife gloves is a must on these things especially if you leave them out thawing or whatever for a couple of days get nasty you don't want all that stuff getting up underneath your fingernails uh, what another person told me is that you want to take a look at these teeth really close get some pictures of them because they'll fall out uh, when you're doing the maceration process and you're gonna to have to glue them back in later and you want them to be in the correct order so you want to get a little idea by taking some pictures of them and figuring out what's what so that's one tip and then the next tip is after you get all of this stuff cut off of the uh, well, after you get all the stuff cut off of the uh, head you want to put a rubber band around it because you don't want this jaw you know once you cut all that tongue and everything out of there and you cut the bottom let the, the tongue will fall out of the bottom there uh, you want to rubber band that head together and uh, somebody told me to use these paint stripper bags and you just put the whole skull in the paint stripper bag uh, and close it up or just twist it and then drop it down in uh, in your maceration tank now some people use like a ski uh, what do you call it a mesh type of metal tray fine mesh so that they don't lose any of their teeth because some of them are very very small 
or just to do the major parts if you're doing something like a deer skull or whatever um, we finished up last week on the deer head maceration and I have one of those right here handy that I can get a hold of um, so this is what they're looking like now really nice and clean got our horns the horns get a little bit dark if you drop them down in the maceration water here a little bit but I plan on darkening the rest of the antlers so shouldn't be a big deal uh, all of the teeth are left intact and all of the, the cartilage up in the nose is what you you want all that to remain there now you're gonna have some of these white spots right here it's just a little bit of left over and we can get that with the Dremel or whatever and it'll pop right out of there but in all these porous surfaces um, sorry I was out of frame uh, all these little porous surfaces around where the where uh, things can get hung up in there you'll be wanting to try to clean that out with something small a little stick or whatever all up in these little holes anyhow so that one's looking good and uh, I didn't want to do too long of a video but I believe we got some a few specimens and what we're going to shoot for in the end is and this is a beaver a beaver that looks nice and clean like this with everything glued all back in and uh, you can see right there there's a little remnant of, uh, of the white stuff on there still and I can just get that like I said with a little dremel or a little scratcher something like that anyhow that's all I got for now I gotta get to work on this stuff so uh, we're done we'll catch y'all next time hope you enjoy the video